Guys and girls, let's get the show on the road. And as uh, Dominic Perrottet said, Australia, we're open for business. New Zealand, your time is coming. Melbourne, <laughs> congratulations. The day's coming where you're going to be able to sit down and say, I'll have a soy flat white, extra hot with one equal, please. And be sitting there at the table while I'll come and serve you the coffee without a mask. Well done. You've got through it. But the good news is, guys and girls, that this event today brought to you here by Repit and the real estate gym, Tom Panos. And in particular today, we're going to be talking to you about a great new function on Agent Box. I've got with me my two co-pilots, David Bliss and Ryan O'Grady. David, you all know because you see him every month. Ryan O'Grady is the general manager of um, Agent Point, and we are going to turn to them in a moment. But oh, firstly, how are you going, guys? You well? Awesome. I'm back in the office for the first time. It's great. Yeah, well, look at you. You've got your nice business shirt on there because you're in the business development sales side. And then we've got Ryan who's wearing a, you know, it's probably a $200 country road shirt. But that's the thing about shirts, right? T-shirts. They can't look good. The expensive ones have to sort of have that look about them. But you know he's a techie. You know he's a techie from the way that he's appeared. How are you going, Ryan? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I've, uh, I'm booked in for a haircut and shave on Saturday. So every time, every, every time I see someone now that's got disheveled hair, I think straight away that guy stuck to the rules. That's what I think. He stuck to the rules. He's a good guy. But gang, guess what? O-N-D-F-M. I'll say it again. O-N-D-F-M. It's not a radio station. It's more important. It is the best five months in real estate. October, November, December, February, March. I want everyone watching this across Australia and New Zealand on Facebook or you're on here on Zoom to understand not every month is equal. And we clearly know from looking at the sales registers of offices over the last 20 years that in October, November, December, February and March, that's where the money is earned in real estate. It's grand slam. So my advice is, number one, say goodbye to your partner. Say goodbye to your kids. They're back at school and say, I'll see you on Christmas Eve. I'm going to work hard and I'm disappearing. You won't see much of me because we need to go into battle. And I'm telling you, I have never, ever seen a marketplace that has so much stock, so many appraisals, so many buyers with a high appetite. This is the days that you're going to look back and say, could you remember that? We used to list them and sell them in 24 hours. Could you remember that? I couldn't actually fit in all the opens on my Saturday, so I had to spread them over those Sundays. Guys and girls, I'm telling you that this is the time. This is where the rubber hits the road. And this is a time where you've got to step up and say, I'm all in. Now, gentlemen, I want to let you know that COVID-19 has actually turbocharged technology in real estate. What we've been trying to sort of do, what we've been hearing for decades, technology, technology, all of a sudden, it happened in 18 months. In 18 months, we've now moved into the new agent. And I've got to tell you, you need to have a high EQ, but you've also got to have a decent TQ, technology quotient. Because right at the moment, I'm seeing real estate agents from proposals to actually DocuSign to more importantly, tools like SMSing to get your listings and make sales. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about having a salesperson substituted by technology. I'm talking about a salesperson being complemented by technology. Because if you can make one sale a year, you can make a hundred. You've learned the process. All you've got to do it is at scale. And today, we're going to be showing you a couple of text messages that are helping real estate agents have scale at, on a steroid level. And in addition to that, I'm also going to be handing over to our two co-pilots who are going to show you a new function on Agent Box. So if you're not an Agent Box client, 
and you were looking for the thing that moves the doll to say, let's dump our current CRM system and let's go with the best, this is the game changer because I've seen it with my own eyes. You are going to have your vendors who are going to be as smart as you in the vendor management process. I mean, guys, what I've seen, look, what I've just seen that Ryan show me is probably a vendor having the exact feedback that the agent's getting. The only difference is they're not seeing the eyeballs or the faces of the people. Otherwise, in terms of real-time data in the moment, it is, man, this is next level. David, I know that you've been working on it. Um, your comments. I was, uh, I was thinking about this uh, just this morning and I remembered back to an article I read in, after the GFC about the businesses who were most successful after the GFC. And I looked at them and they were the businesses that pivoted uh, the quickest. They were the ones that adapted the quickest to what happened. And they were the ones that came out of the GFC and they were the ones that grew after, after that as well. And I liken that very much to where we are now. The doors are opening up. I was in my car. I was driving today. The sun was coming out. I was heading into the office with my sales team and there was a huge amount of momentum as well. So uh, if you combine that level of motivation uh, with the technology uh, and how people are now wanting to interact, people are more confident with, being, with digital tools. They want to be kept up to date live. Um, they don't want to be waiting for things anymore. What do you wait for anymore? You know, you press a button and you get food delivered. Like, why do I have to wait a week to get feedback from my vendors sorry, to my vendors, like people want things live now. So the ability for businesses, as you said, about a TQ, uh, get focused on technology because this is how the consumers are now interacting with not just real estate businesses, but all businesses. And if you're not doing this, I guarantee you there's going to be some young whippersnapper who's probably 25 years old. It'll be the Josh Teslans who are going out there and uh, blowing the world away with the amount of volume of sales because they are engaged in technology and they can do more with less and it complements them, as you say. So I think this is the new world. It's exciting. Okay. On that note, where you mentioned Josh Teslin, <clears throat> as you know, Josh Teslin's a client of mine. I've been working with him for four or five years. He has got 15 more sales to go to hit 300 sales for the calendar year. That's correct. You've heard it. 285 sales, Josh Tesselin, with 15 to go. In my real estate gym, a lot of his systems and content sits in the real estate gym. So what I've done today is actually taken some elements of his system, and I've actually added some other SMSs that are giving great traction. The real estate agent of 2021 and forward is high tech, high touch. And what I'm gonna do now for about five or 10 minutes is just show you some of the SMSs that are currently being used by Josh Tesselin and other agents that do two to $3 million in GCI. Of course, if you're not a gym member and you wanna be a gym member, go to realestategym.com.au and make 2022 the year that you say, that's it, I'm getting a coach, even if it's a virtual coach. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna now share the screen here and I'm gonna bring up a couple of text messages that I think are really useful helping you go into the remainder of this year. I press share here, open up there, come here, press share there. And what I'll do is I open that there. That is not what I wanted to do, but it is close enough. So the first thing I wanna let you know, guys and girls, what I've done is I've put these in categories. And I want everyone to understand one of the reasons why text messaging now is a very effective way to be communicating with the marketplace is that firstly, a text message has got a higher open rate. Number two, a text message demands a response there and then. I don't know what you're like, guys, but Ryan and David, I get emails Man, I look at them. Sometimes they sit in my inbox for quite a while. I don't act on them. Yet a text message, I get it. I've got a bigger tendency to just reply back to it. There's something about the immediacy of a text message. And I think a lot of it's got to do, guys and girls, with this. You know, we wear wearable devices. 
like you know, watches and our iPads and our mobiles are all linked to this ecosystem of messages, and they're just always there. I also think that, and I've got to tell you, I shared this the other day, guys. I've learned something, and that is if I have a meeting with a client and as soon as I walk out of the meeting, I say, hey, Ryan, great to see you today. Really looking forward to doing work. And I put an emoji like a thumbs up. If he replies back with a thumbs up, there's connection. There's connection. That emoji, there's something that basically says, yeah, mate, I get it. We're on the same page. On the other hand, if you walk out of a listing presentation and you send a text message and they don't respond by emoji or nothing, could be a problem. Doesn't mean you've lost a listing, but I've got to tell you, if you send another text message and they don't come back to you, Houston, we may have a problem. So guys and girls, I am going to let you know that I will now share my screen again and uh, where we go, share here. Just want to show you a couple of these text messages. So appraisal. The first thing I want to let you know is um, an email. Uh, let me actually, you know what I'll do? I'll go straight to this one here, the Josh Tesla text message. What he does, guys, look how smart he is. He sends it at eight o'clock at night on a Saturday, right? Everyone's gone. But he's basically saying, Hey, I've just sold this. So there's a strong message that's going to the vendor. I'm still working. He sends this to his pipeline. In his database, what he's got is pipeline sellers. And I've got to say to you, he sends this. He take a photocopy of a contract with a signature on there and sends that showing, hey, seeing is believing. Other things, anniversary text messages. These ones have been inspired by Rita, good ones from Rita, which I know are integrated with AgentBox. Buyer nurturing text messages. And then you've got, you know, some really good off-market text messages. Lisa Novak, before they hit realestate.com or domain, she'll send a text message saying, hey, this is a pre-market opportunity. So what's the point? There are so many uses of text messaging. Again, here's another one that's been sold under offer tonight, all to your pipeline. The point I'm making, guys and girls, is this. Text messaging in combination with phone calls, in combination with an email, in combination with your video work on social media, in combination with your just listed, just sold, is allowing you to have concerted market activity. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Recency trumps loyalty. And what's going to give you recency? When you are actually across everything that's going on in the market and you're actually communicating that out to actual the vendors and to the buyers and to your pipeline. Today, my friends, we're going to be talking to you about this wonderful new tool that Agent Box has got, which is called the Vendor App. And what it does, it allows a vendor to actually get true understanding of what the market thinks on their property. Now, this is important, gang, because as we move into a marketplace that has a high level of stock coming on, it also means the absorption rate is changing. And when the absorption rate changes, it means that buyers have more to choose from, which means that days on market might spread a little bit longer. And it'll also mean that vendors who are expecting to win the lottery in this hot market may not win the first prize in the lottery. They may have to lower their expectations. We are seeing the market shift. And I've said it before, low offers, they blame the market. No offers, they blame the agent. And the best real estate agents that I know have got this ability to get a vendor on a journey from expecting to win the lottery when they list to by the time they're doing a deal, that they've accepted, hey, I might not get 2 million, I'll get 1.8, but there have been evidence proof points along the way to help them understand that. David, I'll hand over to you just to say a few things. And then what I want to do is Ryan, and Ryan is going to, and don't get scared, everyone, because I know the minute we have tech presenting on a screen, people think, am I going to get overwhelmed? No, you won't get overwhelmed. I think that you'll be able to understand how this works. So David, um, before we hand over to Ryan, your view on the vendor app. 
The app, this is really interesting. I It's brand new, so I've only been able to speak to a couple of clients about it. But the one particular client uh, based out Western Sydney, you know, they're really focused on this race to Christmas. They've had, they've done really well during COVID, but they, they see these next couple of weeks, what have we got? Probably four or five weeks before they've got to lock in their auctions uh, that are still going to complete this year. And they're already pre-qualifying people for a Super Saturday next year as well. So they're really, really focused on this race to Christmas. And exactly as you said, the market's going to change just be purely because of the stock volumes. And something that happens, well, I hope what I hope a lot of uh, agents are doing is their pre-sale, um, uh, what's the call, pre-sale meeting with their vendors. And where you should be sitting down and saying, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, we've got all of our photos. We've talked about a pricing strategy and this is the pricing strategy that we're going ahead with. If we don't get at least... 15 or whatever the number you feel is appropriate, 15 open for inspection attendees this Saturday, I'm going to be coming back to you and talking about how we adjust this price, not your expectations, just the price, because we want to be getting people through this home. Now, usually that would then open for inspection would happen. You might give them a quick call, but it's generally the Sunday, the Monday, the Tuesday where they're actually getting the real feedback. So giving something to people live you're actually, and I don't, I don't like to use the word conditioning because we don't like to use that in real estate, but it is meaning that on a Saturday, they're actually seeing how that open for inspection is performing live. And without you even having to speak to them, that, that vendor is sitting there saying, oh, this isn't performing quite as well. I'm going to need to make a change. I'm going to make, need to make a change. And that pre-setting of expectations is going to help you get your agent, get your vendors in a better position to sell. So I think this, as you say, is an absolute game changer to help that component of your. Okay. Uh, so team. gang, I'm going to hand on to Ryan, but I want everyone to know that this is the way that you enter the conversation with your vendor on using the vendor app. After you've signed up the listing, as David said, the stage, by the way, David, we call it setting it up to sell or the setting the stage. Set to sell. Uh, that's it. Yes. Yeah, set to sell. So what we do, what we do is we say, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I've got to let you know that now we're going to actually begin our campaign. I am going to let you know that one of my jobs is to make sure that I'm giving you all the feedback, both good and bad. I also want to let you know that I'm going to be giving that to you in real time. I'm also going to let you know that if we haven't got engagement within the first seven days, that we're going to need to sit down and talk. Why? Because there's only two reasons why we don't get strong engagement in a property. It's either the price is too high or the marketing has been poor. And I'm going to make sure that we don't get into the stale zone by sitting there too long without adjusting one of those two levers. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I'm letting you know that I'm going to be giving you access to a vendor app that's going to give you total visibility on everything that's going on with your property. I don't want there to be any surprises. In fact, you'll be getting a text message off me and that text message is going to allow you then to have total visibility on what is going on. Buyers, marketing, offers, positive news, negative news. Now, Ryan, I'm going to hand over to you and just give everyone a bit of a backstage view of what that would look like from a vendor's perspective. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Um, so, yeah, so, look, late last year, we were contacted by multiple agents. Um, and, you know, the problem they had is they're like, you know, how can we keep vendors updated in real time, you know, regarding their campaign? And then the second part is how do we provide consumers with a great experience? Um, so we went away. We kind of thought about that problem. You know, the vendor piece, I think, you know, there's an easy solution there and it's, Let's give them um, a platform that they can, you know, get up-to-date, real-time data about their campaign. Um, but the second one around, you know, buyers and, and general consumers, we actually started to think, well, you know, if you look at the traditional marketing funnel in real estate, does that, you know, does the traditional marketing funnel apply nowadays in real estate? Like you've got, you know, sometimes the transaction in real estate can take up to 12 years. Um, and, you know, we, we use HubSpot as a, C, uh, as a CRM system and their approach to marketing is this flywheel approach, which is how do you attract, engage and delight consumers? And we started to think about that and said, well, you know, that's actually relevant in, in real estate. Look, if you look at the uh, property ownership life cycle and break it down, you've essentially got these five stages. You've got the research stage, you've then got search, qualify, 
um, sign stage. You've then got campaign, completion, and then the longest stage is that ownership phase. So, you know, in relation to the consumer, how do we cater to their needs regardless of what stage they're at in that property life cycle? And the answer to that is what we came up with is let's give them an agency branded mobile app that supports them throughout the entire property ownership life cycle. And, you know, consumers face uncertainty, you know, at many touch points along there. Um, and if you look at, there's a, there's a vendors, there's buyers, there's owners, you know, when, when they own the property and then there's the whole research phase. Um, what we're going to chat about today is, is the vendor piece. Um, and then, you know, in other sessions, we can talk about, um, you know, the other stages of the app. So what does a great vendor experience look like? Well, you know, it's about getting that real-time data. It's about being able to access that on your phone. Um, and then, you know, when you do have conversations with agents, at least, you know, you're prompted about what, what conversations that you want to have. And then from an agent's perspective, you know, what, what's the, the value prop in you in offering such a service? Well, you've obviously got that improved vendor experience. Um, in the long run, you're going to save time and costs as you're getting data in the hands of your vendors instantly. You're going to have the brand reinforcement because they're downloading that app. You know, when you send them the SMS, they hit download, they save it to their phone, you get your logo on there. And then obviously when they open the app up, you and, and your brand as an agent is there and then, you know, the last, the last piece there is you can win more listings. Some of the customers that are using it now, they're actually speaking about this app and they're, they're, they're showing a demo version of it during listing campaigns to help, you know, have, have a point of difference to the other agents that are going. I can, Ryan, I can see how that works because I often get clients, uh, not clients, I have to get colleagues, associates, People that aren't in real estate that are vendors, I had one today. The, the vendor said, man, I want to show you what the agent's been sending me in the weekly report. What do I think? So what he's done is he's actually pulled up on his mobile phone just an email, right, that has come from the agent and I've looked at it, you know. What you're talking about here is taking that to the next level where they're actually seeing something in really rich media branded in the agent's colours, right, and it's pretty not, you know, it knocks people off, you know, it's just next level in the, it's not just like the typical vendor report, Ryan, says we had 10 people that looked at it and they like the kitchen, they don't like the bathroom, they think it's too far from the school and someone made an offer for a million dollars. That's that's the typical vendor report. What you're talking about is something far more richer than that because it's integrated in agent box. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's real time. And look, it doesn't need to replace the traditional vendor report. You may still prepare that weekly and deliver that. This is just an added tool that gives, gives the vendor the real-time data. So why don't I jump into it and give you a quick look at it? So essentially, once the app's downloaded on their phone, they open it up, they go sort of straight into their campaign. Um, you know, you can see what the highest offer is. You've obviously got the address here, some key data about the campaign. And then you've got this snapshot around, you know, all the, the key sort of stats that you want to know, not only as an agent, but as a vendor. Um, so you've got, you know, your property inquiries, hot leads, you know, the open homes, you know, who's intended the open homes. By the way, Ryan, as you're talking, I can pretty much tell everyone if I was an agent and I was going to a listing presentation tonight, I would simply be pulling this out and saying, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I want to let you know that frequency builds trust and having education and knowledge is power. This is what will happen when you list with me. This is how we'll be communicating. This is what you'll be getting. You'll be able to see all of this. I think they'll be, I think it's another, I think it's a listing presentation um, value add. Yeah, definitely. Like it, it, it'll give you a point of difference from your competitors. Um, you know, contracts issued. So remember all this data is just pulled dynamically out of agent box. So as soon as a lead in or contact in agent box is updated as downloading a contract or, you know, if they go and use before you bid and they, they do that, that up, up, updates agent box, you know, it does the same thing here. It updates in the app, you know, auction, you know, registered bidders, weekly update, you know, that's where you can give that. Um, interest levels. So again, um, everybody that goes in agent box, you can flag, you know, hot, warm, cold, that'll show up here. Uh, loaded documents. 
So, you know, this could be the reports that, um, you, you know, from realestate.com and domain, the weekly campaign sort of snapshot of what's happened on the portal. You can load those up in here so the vendors can, can look at those. Uh, what the inquiry source is. So, you know, these they, we've only got four here, but, you know, if you had others like your website or, or any other platforms, they could appear there. A general market update. And then obviously, you know, the, the, the key details around, you know, who, who the agent is. Um, and then, you know, if you go down to the next level, you go, right, well, tell me about the property inquiries. I, I step into here. I can see that, you know, A Park has made one inquiry. They, they haven't done an inspection yet. But they've taken a contract, they've made an offer, done a report. Um, I, can, I can open that up here and I can see a full kind of activity feed for that particular contact and their engagement with the campaign. Now, you'll see that for, for all contacts, um, you know, we could make it so if you wanted to display their first name, you could do that. Um, if you wanted to have the feedback that they've provided, we can put that in there as well. Um, they're just options to configure. But look, all, all the contacts are there, all their history. Um, you sort of go back here, you know, tell me about open homes. So you step into here. Okay, there's been six inspections, 44 offers, you know, 12 contracts. Um, yeah, tell me about this open home. You jump into it. You can see, you know, all the engagement there. This particular person, you know, they've done, they've come through the property three times. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, as again, as I sort of said, it's um, completely uh, real time, all out of agent box. Um, and it's all ready to go there today for anyone that, um, you know, wants to look at taking that up. All righty. So, I'll get you to stop share and bring you back in. Um, so, David, get you to unmute. And I just want to confirm. The process is if you are an agent box client, you can go through your normal channels that you communicate with agent box and say, hey, tell me how do I get this triggered? How do I get it? Um, it doesn't sound like it's uh, rocket science. Paul Spitereri saying, love it. Good stuff, Paul. If you are an agent box client, mate, just get onto the team there or your process. If they're not an agent box client, David, what's the process? As always, go to the go to agentbox.com.au. Uh, there's a form there. We'll take you through both the system and we'll be able to take you through the vendor app as well in a bit, little bit more detail and uh, make sure that we can get that set up for anyone that's interested. Yeah. So, gang, before I... By the way, Ryan, thank you so much and well done on the great development work to do that. Um, and, uh, I mean, obviously, anything that is... Like, in at the moment, what I've learned is... If you can integrate stuff to stuff that you're already doing, it doesn't mean that you're doing this extra big process to actually fulfill the requirement of the product. And the fact that it's integrated already with what you're doing essentially means that all it's doing is pulling data that's there anyway. And um, I just think to myself, this is a no-brainer and we need no-brainers in real estate because I've got to tell you right now, you're going to a listing presentation You've got to be able to tell a vendor why you versus all the others. And we don't want the why you is because I'm 1% com commission. We don't want that to be your unique selling proposition. We want your unique selling proposition is, hey, I use this text messaging system to reach all these passive buyers. Hey, I use this method in social media to target the passive buyer. Hey, I use this in my negotiation to extract 10% more. Hey, I use this marketing to find a buyer that is actually not going to be seeing it on real estate or domain. And hey, I want to let you know, in addition to that, the minute you actually come on board, you're getting your own vendor app. You are flying this plane as a co-pilot with me, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor. This is going to be, you, you're going to know exactly what's going to be happening in real time. But as I finish off, gentlemen, I want everyone to understand what I said at the start. These are critical times in real estate. And ask yourself the following, how real estate fit are you? As I'm leaving here, I want to ask you at the moment, are you 10 out of 10 in optimism? Are you 10 out of 10 in energy and enthusiasm? Have you got a listing presentation that's unstoppable, irresistible? Do you currently have very, very good ways of handling fee objections and marketing objections? Do you have a structure with your unit, with your PA, and making sure that you are not serving drinks on the plane because the pilot doesn't? You're a real estate agent, list, 
sell, negotiate. That's your job. Are you making sure that you're having vendor conversations and high-level vendor management? You can get a tick there if you've got the vendor app. In addition to that, are you ensuring that you're managing your stress and anxiety? And you're going to have that because in real estate, guys and girls, prospecting are long stretches of grind and hustle with some short moments of elation occasionally. And that requires persistence. And that requires you to be able to understand that you're going to be doing stuff and not actually getting any results now. This is why there's such a big failure rate in real estate. Don't forget, the death of the pipeline is the death of the agent. An agent box is going to ensure that you have a pipeline that is providing endless numbers of sellers falling into your lap every month. But remember, agent box does work, but it needs humans to work it. Humans rarely work it. That's the problem with CRM systems. It's also the problem with diets. It needs people to stick to them. But the good news is, Agent Box, in my mind, with the feedback from the REB top 100 agents, is simply the easiest system to stick by. Guys, signing off. I'll see you uh, before Christmas. I'm sure we've got more sessions lined up. David, yep. good to see you. Ryan, i got to tell you, mate, you're going to get really good value in the next haircut. Top value. Thanks, Tom. Signing off. See you guys.